change, right? Ugh. For some of us. Ugh. And for a lot of us, we can see a lot happening in the world right now. And for some of us, it feels really uncomfortable. Right? We see some challenging things. We're experiencing you know, really hard effects of huge hurricanes and incredible heat over this winter and drought. We're seeing social unrest, immigrants traveling, <coughs> walls, mass shootings. And for some of you, on occasion, you may be wondering, where the heck is God in all of this? Where the heck is God in all of this? And even for several of my practitioner friends and minister friends, this is a challenge right now in this moment. And there's a lot of years and study <laughs> that go into holding the consciousness of everything's okay, that no matter what is happening, that the divine is running through in and as that. And even, even with all of that training, there is an experience for many of us of wondering, where the heck is God in all this? I believe that we are in a time of great change. Yeah, feels like it. I think we can all feel that there's a time of great changes, increasing pressure. We're seeing and feeling, I believe, through this pressure, through this time of discomfort and hurt and darkness, we are being called to be our greatest selves. This is the call that we are in the midst of. But the process of that, as many of us have been experiencing, maybe not you, but many of us have been experiencing, is at the very least uncomfortable and at the worst painful. And for some of us, it can feel like it's taking a really long time. So what I'm talking about today had a little tweak to it at the last minute. What can I say? <laughs> That's funny. So, spiritual evolution my timing, God's timing, which right there is just a joke, right? That's, that's supposed to be funny. <laughs> so I know for myself, I have had personal frustration in the amount of time it takes me to manifest whatever transition I am knowing for, I'm praying for, I'm holding for, and I'm waiting, and I'm praying, and I'm denying, and I'm affirming, and I'm doing all my stuff, and man, Sometimes, sometimes, it can take a little while. But it's important that this is to recognize and know that this is not a function of God withholding from me. God's not keeping my good, that vision that I'm holding, that feeling that I have that's pulling me forward into a new experience. God's not withholding that from me. In fact, my friend Kamatara down in Albuquerque describes it when she's praying with me as the great storehouse of everything and all that is possible. And then you walk into the storehouse and you simply claim. Others describe it as a banquet table. Pull yourself up to the banquet table of anything you could ever imagine. Just grab a chair. It's right there for you. However, as Reverend Anne described a couple of weeks ago right here in this room, she talked about this gestation or germination period and the seeds of possibility, right? That there is a time, there is a thing that needs to happen, and oftentimes that thing that happens is over time. Not because God says, mm-mm-mm, mm-mm-mm, mm -mm -mm, you're not good enough yet. No, it's our own mind and our own thinking and our own growing that needs to happen. This gestation period is sacred. 
Now, I know a lot of us have trouble with that because when we're in that place of not knowing, that in-between place, that uncertain place, it's really uncomfortable. And it can oftentimes feel like the dark night of the soul. And we just want to get to the other side of it real quick. But it's like Reverend Ann described a couple of weeks ago. Like, you see the little shoots of the carrots, you're not going to pull them up and see if they're done. You need to allow them. That will work. You need to allow them their time to grow, to be ready. Sometimes we require some pressure to grow into the next beautiful thing that we're about to become. Think of the caterpillar, the chrysalis, where it melts into this gooey thing. Doesn't sound like fun. You just melt into the But then you emerge. You emerge as a beautiful butterfly. But you need that period of time in order to have that transition happen. Now, Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science, says, evolution is the time and the process through which spirit unfolds. What is evolution but a possibility unfolding through man's mind? I love that, Ernie. Now, I have to tell you that I am having an incredible experience of serendipity right now. Because there are things that I've been studying for years or that I studied years ago that had a big impact on me. And things that I have just begun to study that are coming together in this beautiful convergence. And I felt it this weekend. And I was so excited. I went to the lid and I said, oh my God, something's happening. I can really feel it. And so, you know, hence the change to some things today. Well, years ago, I took a class in Seattle on the great turning. The Great Turning is an idea, and uh, one of the people leading this idea is Joanna Macy. Uh, she is an author, she is an eco-philosopher, so eco a scholar of Buddhism, general systems theory, and deep ecology. So pretty much she's pretty smart. Yeah, she's fancy. And she talks about the fact that we are in the midst of a great turning. That's what she calls it, a great turning. And she says, we are shifting from an industrial growth society to a life-sustaining civilization. The ecological and social crises that we face today are caused by an economic system dependent on speeding up growth. Right? You see that. You feel that. Faster, more, newer, shiny, disposable, get rid of it. We're not really concerned with what's happening to the earth around that or to each other or to other human beings that are engaged in the creation of these things. Give me the new shiny thing. But a revolution is happening. People are realizing that our needs can be met without destroying our world. We're waking up. And especially we know that when it's having to do with our money, if you start to shift things, you really get something stirred up. Yes? And we can feel that. We can see that. We can see that in, in our environment. We can see that in our social systems, in our political environment. We can see and feel this upheaval around us. Right? Watch the news any given day. And you see it. But Joanna says that as we are stirring this pot, that there's there are three dimensions, but one particular one that I just fell in love with is that the dimension of the great turning is a shift in consciousness. This is a very scientific view. How are the systems of, de of developing things, of building things, how, are, how, how do those become? How do we change them? But at the end, she says that an essential part of this transformation of the great turning is a change in consciousness, a shift in our consciousness. And she also says the great turning is a name for the essential adventure of our time, right here, right now. 
So confirmed, yes, you can see the effects of changes. You can see things stirred up in our world. Yeah, things are, things are weird. But we can also feel the evidence. We can feel it, even if we couldn't see the news. Right? You can feel that there's stuff, there's tension, there's anxiety, there's anger, there's frustration. You can feel that, whether you saw evidence, physical evidence of it or not. Well, I'm reading this book. Now you can see. <laughs> Emergence. Barbara Marks Hubbard. Oh, yes, we know this book. I'm on fire about this book. So, in this book, she refers to the emergence process as an evolutionary path leading to the development of ourselves as co-creating. Sound familiar? <laughs> Sound like something you might have heard a time or two within this community? <clears throat> this time is our spiritual evolution. And it's connected to everything. It's not just the inner work. It is everything that we see around us, and we can impact it. Barbara refers to those emerging as universal humans, and she described them in this way. It is one connected through the heart to the whole of life. A person awakening from within by a deep heart's desire to express and give his or her gifts into the world. The universal human is attracted to the future progressing towards the unknown, imbued with the mysterious sense of what's emerging. Seeking to join with others to co-create a new and better world is a type of person who is expand, who has expanding consciousness and awareness that the universe is evolving, and so are we. Now isn't that exciting? Because as religious scientists, we are already on that growing edge. We, those of you in this room who are called to a message like this, are on the edge of this spiritual evolution. We are the front runners. We are the front runners. We are doing the work right here and right now. You felt this though, right? Mm -hmm. You felt that there's something about what you're doing and what you're up to and how you're believing and how you're thinking and how you're doing your spiritual practice. That there's something about that that is evolutionary. There's a little bit of a here, though. If we're thinking about the change that's happening right now, if we think about the pain, if we think about the speeding up of things that we're experiencing in our society, in our world, I feel like that is calling us to something more. We need to turn up the heat on our work because there is big work to be done. Now, I'll tell you a little story. I'm back in boot camp again. You know, boot camp, the exercise thing. So a million years ago when I lived here in Santa Fe before, part of this beautiful community before, I was in a boot camp class. And I loved it at the end. <laughs> when I first started this class, for the first few weeks, I would come into the class and there was nothing that I could do in the way that they presented it. I needed modifications for everything. Everything. And the first day that I left the class, I physically was ill. I, you know, I was sick. It was so hard. I had within my body, not the muscle capacity, not the endurance, nothing to be able to do this work, but I kept going. I kept going because my back had been hurting me and I felt really weak. And I hated feeling weak and I wanted to be stronger and so I had 
this purpose and this reason to go, and I felt really committed to doing the work because I just decided, hey, this time around I'm committed, and guess what? Just saying that worked. <laughs> and I had the discipline to get up. Every day that I had class, okay, maybe not a couple of days, but almost every day that I had class, I had the discipline to get up, get out of bed, and go to class. I think that our journey within Centers for Spiritual Living is much like that. When we first start, let me make this personal. When I first walked into my first Center for Spiritual Living up in Seattle, I listened, I was blown away, I knew I found my spiritual home, all that good stuff that we talk about, right? But I really started to hear people talk about, they're testifying, right? Hey, I manifested some money, wow, I got a new car, I called to me a new career. We're finding parking spaces everywhere we go, and in Seattle, that's a big deal. <laughs> and that's fantastic. We do that throughout Centers for Spiritual Living. We are demonstrating for ourselves a co-creative relationship with the universe. We're practicing. We're building our muscles. And we're building lives we love at the same time. Right? We're being examples of what's possible when we live and think and breathe and behave in the way that we do here, that we learn here, and, 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 and. Now we are in the midst of a great turning. There's a lot of pain in the world. And we can know as religious scientists that there is something beyond that, but we don't pretend that that's not happening. That there are people who are not suffering. They absolutely are experiencing suffering just like we do in our own lives, but we know for something better. But now we're in the midst of this global turning. And we are emerging. We are on the growing edge of humanity's spiritual evolution. That is a big job. I believe that we've been building our consciousness muscles just like I did in boot camp. So by the end, I was doing burpees. I went through the whole circuit and did every single one of those exercises with zero modification by the time I was done with that class. It was magnificent. How long have you been a part of Centers for Spiritual Living? How long have you been practicing this work? How many things have you manifested for yourself? If you've just walked through the door, get ready. You're gonna knock your own socks off. We've been doing this work for a long time. But we've been building our muscles for the adventure of our time. Over the last 20 years, I've seen some changes in the way that we communicate things at Centers for Spiritual Living. And it seems as if there's been slightly a shift from the predominantly inward and individual message and focus to a more global focus. So it's both aimed. So let me read to you our global mission, purpose, and vision to see if you can hear that in there. Our mission is to provide spiritual tools for personal and global transformation. Our purpose is to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence and our vision is a world that works for everyone. In these, in this mission, purpose, and vision, I feel, I feel a call that pulls from within me and that makes me ask, what is mine to do in the world? There's more than just what I can do for myself. And I see and hear people all around me asking the same question. And this isn't about making any of us feel that. Like I said, building the muscles of manifestation for our own livelihood and for our own joy and experience of a good life is absolutely essential to get to a point where we start to send out that goodness into the world and transform it. I 
I've shared with you a few times, I think, that I have the blessing of working at the Center for Action and Contemplation that's down in Albuquerque. And it's very much in alignment with the work here. But the mission and vision has a few more words to it. I think it puts some meat on the bones. So I want to share it with you. And, and I absolutely believe that it's in alignment with our own. Our vision is amidst a time of planetary change and disruption. We envision a recovery of our deep connection to each other and our world, led by Christian and other spiritual movements that are freeing leaders and communities to overcome dehumanizing systems of oppression and cooperate in the transforming work of love. That's what we're up to, yes? <clears throat> And our mission is to nurture the emergence of transformative wisdom and service to the healing of our world. That's also what we're up to. I believe that we have been here building our consciousness muscle, our co-creative muscle. And in the process of our spiritual evolution, we are becoming universal humans. The way that Barbara Marks Hubbard said for such a time as this. For such a time as this. And that comes from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14. And what does this mean for such a time as this? This is a time of change calling us to deepen, to evolve, in order to continue to be on the growing edge of humanity's spiritual evolution, emerging universal humans. In other words, we need to get to boot camp. <laughs> we need to apply those principles of boot camp to our spiritual work. And what does that look like? What does it take? First of all, it takes commitment. Sorry, connection to a purpose. What's your purpose? On a global, on a larger, on an outward facing level. What is your connection to your purpose? And it can be <laughs> very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be, I am a light. And without my light being fed and glowing as brightly as I can absolutely get it, the world is a darker place. It needs me. A connection to your purpose. Commitment to the work. That's, that's the one that this is basically a decision, right? Not a trick. There's no like, hey, if you do this and dance this way and practice this and step, no. Like, you just decide, I am committed to this. It's a decision. And then discipline. <laughs> discipline to show up. Do it even if you don't feel like it. And act in service to the world. So, some of these can be dirty words for some of us, yes, especially in the religious science folks, right? Like, don't tell me what to do. Sounds a little bit like obligation. Sounds a little bit like making me follow the rules. But if these are internal calls, who's making you do anything? I'm famous for you're not the boss of me. Don't tell me what to do. Who am I talking to when we're in this conversation? Who am I talking to? So listen again. Listen again to that description of the universal emerging human. And see if you feel the call within yourself. It is one connected through the heart to the whole of life. A person awakening from within to a deep heart's desire to express and give his or her gifts into the world. A universal human is attracted to the future, progressing towards the unknown, imbued with a mysterious sense of what's emerging, seeking to join with others to co-create a new and better world. It is a type of person who is expanding consciousness and awareness that the universe is evolving, and so are we. When the call is from within and not being imposed, might we be able to look at those words in a new light, and not just in the old patterns of habit that we've looked with them. So I invite you this week, 
is the invitation. I invite you this week to find or to begin to sit and discover your connection to purpose. What is it? Ask the divine. What is it? And then sit in silence and commit a way to hear the answer to that question, to feel the answer to that question. Commitment to the work. The work is living consciously. It's doing your denials and affirmations. It's doing your treatment, your meditation, whatever your spiritual practice is. Commit to it. No trick. Just decide. I invite you. If you're not committed to that now, I invite you this week to commit to that. Turn up the heat on your spiritual practice and use it in service to the world. Discipline to show up. Oh my goodness, there is a call in you. Is that call in you important enough to show up? Even when you don't want to. <laughs> and act. Act. You can't just let that one drop off. Ask for and listen for the call to be in service to this great turning. We in this room who are called to this message of science of mind, that's each and every one of you, we are on the growing edge of this emergence. We are. We are. We are. Now is the time. Right now is the time Let's lead this planetary evolution, shall we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Namaste. Mm -hmm.